church. Hi guys, thank you worship team. That was wonderful. What a way to kickstart our 2021 year. So thank you all for being here. We are so happy to see you. Just a quick announcement before we get to our sermon. We are still following the updated county guidelines. So we're asking everyone to wear their masks in the building, use the hand sanitizing stations in the entrance, and maintain a social distance of six feet. If you are not feeling well, as always, please stay home. We are putting the sermons up on Facebook at 3 p.m. every Sunday, as well as the website. For any offerings you'd like to donate this week, there is a basket in the back on the ushers table. You can drop your offerings into there, or you can give via the church app or website, and that is lifechurchsunvalley.org. And Children's Church, ages 4 through 6th grade, is open. Nursery and Nursing Mom's Room is open for self-service, and kids are dismissed for Children's Church now. Thanks, guys. All right. Happy 2021. We're here. We finally made it. This is good, good. You know, uh, just a little bit of thanks this morning. Uh, before we left on our holidays uh, over to the West Coast, uh, they took up an offering for us, and Kroll and I just have to say from the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much. It's a blessing. Uh, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you how much I got because you'd be jealous. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're on. No oh, good. Uh, but it was hefty. I mean, it was good. I, we we felt very blessed. We got Delta uh, gift cards. So we, we're, we're going to Hawaii <laughs> at some point, as, as long as they open it up over in Hawaii. Uh, we, we received uh, uh, a $500 gift certificate to uh, the Hilton, 500 bucks. And then just, man, we're loaded. So we just feel very, very blessed. On top of that, we were able to bless uh, Dick Williams, who was here that week, and he got a great offering. And uh, you know what? I just love our generous giving church. I mean, it's amazing. You guys, give it up for yourself. <laughs> All right. Well, I have a message from heaven this morning. We're not in John. This morning, so uh, we've been in John, and I wanted to correct my uh, youth pastor from last week. He said we've been in John for eight months. We've actually been there for a year and four months. <laughs> but it's been worth it, you know, just going through there and just, I feel like we're wringing out everything we can out of the book of John because it's so relevant, Amen. It hits us where we're at, and I'm just so blessed to be there. This morning, uh, uh, I just really felt like that God, His word to us this morning is He wants us to focus on His faithfulness. Tell your neighbor real quick, say, God's faithfulness. He's faithful. He's faithful to you. Got this little funny thing from my cousin. Um, you know how 
Southwest goes crazy on their on their uh, things. When, you know, when you get on their flight, you never know what you're going to get on there. Uh, just think of it as we're we're going somewhere today, and you're on a flight. You ready? Hello, welcome to the flight 2021. We are prepared to take off into the new year. Please make sure your attitude and blessings are secured and and locked in an upright position. All self-destructive devices should be turned off at this time. All negativity, hurt, and discouragement should be put away. Should we lose altitude under pressure during the flight, reach up and pull down a prayer. Prayers will automatically be activated by faith. Once your faith is activated, you can assist other passengers. There will be no baggage allowed on this flight. The Captain God has cleared us for takeoff. Destination greatness. Happy New Year. Amen. All right. Say this with me all together. God is faithful. He's faithful. And He's faithful all the time. It's everlasting. How many of you have ever seen the trilogy of the Lord of the Rings? Okay. If, if you refuse to go there, you're probably not going to like what I'm going to say. And, and that's okay. It's okay. But I wanted to talk just a little bit this morning on how God meets us through everything that we go through. We've been through a lot in 2020 been through a lot. God has brought us through, and some of us have even prospered in the process through 2020. But as you watch the Lord of the Rings, how many of you have ever sat down and watched the extended version of Lord of the Rings, all three of them? It takes a whole day to get all the way through there. It's an exhausting set of movies. It shows trial after trial and everything under the sun, every challenge that you can think of, and it was usually life or death situations that were going on. Until this ring of power is destroyed. I'm giving you the end of the movie, so if you haven't seen it, that's what happens. It was a three-part trilogy of overcoming every obstacle of darkness that was set before them. There was a band of men that bound together by, by going on a really a suicidal mission to save the then-known earth from the enemy's plans. In the movie, there were discoveries of the enemy's plans, a joining together to fight the forces of darkness, death of good characters and bad characters, overcoming obstacles of self, greed, Pride, power, lethargy, prejudices, and betrayal. It had everything in this trilogy of shows. And just when you think they couldn't go any farther, something saves them. Something delivers them. Something protects them. Something provides exactly what they need and when they need it. How many of you know God is the best at this? Amen? And some of you might have felt like this in 2020. It's been one thing after another. But how many of you know you're still standing and the fat lady hasn't sung? And if some of you young people don't know what that is, just talk to your parents. They'll tell you what that's all about. We can truly say like the Apostle Paul, looking back at 2020 and leaving those things behind, amen, and pressing forward. Everybody say, press forward. forward. Pressing forward into the high calling of God for your life. God's got something better for you this year in 2021. And He's going to bring you through because He brought you through in 2020. If you're still standing, if you're still breathing, you're still going. You've got to call a call of God on your life and fulfill the call of God that's on your life for this year. Don't hold back. Paul said this, speaking to the church at Corinth, we now have this light shining in our hearts, 
that we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God and not of ourselves. How many of you recognize in 2020 that it's not about you? God was dealing with the self and each of us in 2020. Paul said this, he said, what he was experiencing, we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. And then Paul later on, a couple of chapters later, he says, about his ministry and some of the things that he had gone through and uh, was coming out the other side and just recognized God's call and God's faithfulness on his life to fulfill the call of God that was on his life. It says in um, 2 Corinthians something, uh, I believe it's chapter 4 or 6 or 8, It's in there. As God's partners, we beg you not to accept this marvelous gift of God's kindness and then ignore it. How many of you know we have been so blessed as the body of Christ? We are a blessed and supernatural people, called of God, given everything that pertains to life and godliness. It's all been given to us. It's up to us to use it. And I want to say this. We better use it or lose it. Speak to this side over here. For God says, at just the right time, I heard you. On the day of salvation, I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now. Everybody say now. Now. Because God deals with us in the present. The past is the past. And we can learn from the past. But how many of you know He's got a present for us right now? In the now times of our life. He says, on the day of salvation, I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. We live in such a way that no one will stumble because of us. And no one will find fault with our ministry. In everything we do, we show that we are true ministers of God. We patiently endure troubles and hardships and calamities of every kind. We've been beaten. We've been put in prison. We faced angry mobs. We worked to exhaustion. How many of you kind of felt like that this past year? It was like... Sometimes there was times of weariness. You know, when I got the COVID back in, in, in March, and there were times where I couldn't, you know, Corolla wanted to take me hiking right after COVID. And she wanted to get me out there because uh, she just wanted to get my strength back up and stuff. And she would start walking and say, we're going here. And I'd get about halfway and go, uh-uh. Can't do it. I'm just weak. I feel exhausted on the inside. Those are the times where we can press into God and lean and rely on His strength in our life when we're exhausted. The Bible says, Don't be weary in well doing. In due time, you're going to reap. Amen? And reaping is that strength that's infused inside of your spirit to go on for God and recognize His faithfulness in your life to bring something to pass that you can't do. You can't do it. But God in you can bring the thing to pass that you're called to do. We patiently endure troubles and hardships and calamities of every kind. We've been beaten and put in prison, faced angry mobs, worked to exhaustion, endured sleepless nights, and gone without food. We prove ourselves by our purity and understanding our patience, our kindness, by the Holy Spirit within us, and by our sincere love. We faithfully preach the truth. God's power is working in us. We use the weapons of righteousness in the right hand for attack and the left hand for defense. I want you to keep a picture of that. They did the same thing in the book of of Nehemiah. 
Same thing. They had a sword in one hand and, and, a, and something to work with, something to build in the other hand. And uh, these things were of defense and, and a thrust into the enemy's camp to, to provide protection for them. We serve God whether people honor us in verse 8 or despise us. How many of you know you're going to be despised? But it's okay because God loves you and He accepts you. We are honest, but they call us imposters. We are ignored even though we are well known. We live close to death, but we are still alive. We have been beaten, but we have not been killed. Our hearts ache, but we always have joy. We are poor, but we have been given spiritual, we, we give spiritual riches to others. We own nothing, and yet we have everything. How many of you know that needs to be our attitude in 2021? To recognize what God has poured out into our lives. We've endured a lot of things that the enemy has thrown at us in 2020. In some way, all of us have been touched by what has gone on with the pandemic. Here in, in Idaho, we experienced an earthquake. Uh, right after that, hurricanes, looting, riots, racial divisions, social disruptions, slanderous accusations from every side, death, forced into new norms, layoffs, a volatile election year. We've, we've endured through all of this, and yet we're still here. How many of you know that we have been born for such a time as this? Amen? This is our time. This is the church of the living God's time on planet earth to shine and be radiant with the glory of the Lord. Amen? It's not a time to complain. It's not a time to murmur. It's not a time to, to do the blame game of this and that. They did this to me and, and because this person didn't get it. Forget all that. And focus in on the faithfulness of God for your life, for you to endure and go all the way through. This happened worldwide. It was world, it's not just our nation that went through this. This is worldwide. And how many of you know, there was a wake-up call for the world right now to get right with God. And I believe it's a divine setup by God. I believe, you know, some of these things, that the sickness and the disease, that's not of God. But He has allowed these things where people's hearts would turn to, towards Him. Amen? Where people's uh, lives would get away from the distractions of this earth and the things that would, would take us here and take us there away from the path of God. And God is saying, now, I want you to trust me. Now, I want you to break out of what was and come into this new thing that I have from heaven. What lessons have we learned, just real quick? What lessons have we learned? And I would love to have a show of hands and grab a hold of all the life lessons that we've learned in 2020. I just wrote just a few down things down that... You know, everything has been shaken that could be shaken. Everything. But not everybody has learned the lessons. So for those who haven't learned the lessons in 2021, you're going to go through more shaking in your life. Oh, resonated. Hallelujah. I didn't hear a lot of amen. How many of you feel like that you learned lessons in 2020? Oh my gosh. God has taught me so much. God will allow the shaking to wake us to His purposes on planet Earth. He's no respecter of people. Every life matters to God. Tell your neighbor real quick. Every life matters to God. Every life. He's not pushing anybody away. He is wanting to grab a hold of them 
and take them to himself and say, let go of all the blame stuff. Let go of all the junk that would keep you away from God's highest and God's best. Amen? Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Any of you be with kids? He's no respecter of persons. He's not willing that anybody should perish. So, number one is recognize that the Lord is first priority. He's first. He's number one. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, then all these other things are going to be added unto you. Seek first. Everybody say first. First, foremost, the most prominent place. Allow God to sit on the throne of your heart this year. And don't let anything else come in the way. It can't be your job that's uppermost. It can't be your family. And you, go, and you guys go, oh my gosh, what's he saying? Family is important. But it cannot come before God. As much as I love Corolla, and, and you know, we've been together for 37 years. I know her like the back of my hand. I just, I know what she's going to say. I love her and my heart goes out to her. If I put her before God, something's got to change. I can't come into God's highest and best. Now, this side of heaven, she is absolutely number one. But... God takes first place. He's the priority. It can't be your job. It can't be your money. It can't be your family. It can't be pleasures. It can't be your downtime. Sometimes we grandize vacations. I can't wait till the next vacation. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this and I'm going to do that. I'm looking forward to Hawaii. I'm looking for, but I can't put that as first place in my life. That's not the thing that I should be looking forward to all because I will miss out on what God has. It can't be your downtime. It can't be your comfort. It can't be your convenience. It can't be your securities. I got this much in the bank. And if I just make the right stock market decision... It's going to put me into this next category. How many of you know your security should be lying totally in God today? Everything we have that's good is in Christ. God wants us first and foremost to have a passionate, fervent, intentional relationship with Him. Learning how to live from that life source and then all these other things are going to be added to you. God wants you to have great things. How many of you know that? He wants you to have great things. Those things can't take precedence over your love for Him. We can endure anything. Number two is we can endure anything by going through 2020. It's been a tumultuous year for some. I felt like I was on my deathbed in 2020. I didn't know if I was going to take another breath at a certain point. And then the Lord delivered me. I had people praying. I had four friends that were lowering me down through the roof so I could get my healing. I felt like that. And God met me in the midst of that. There is a blessing on any man who is found faithful through challenging times of hardship. And that man keeps his faith and keeps his promises to the Lord. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 through 25 in the New Living Translation, it says, Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep His promise. How many of you know He's faithful? Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Going down now to verse 32. 
It says, think back on the early days when you first learned about Christ. Remember how you remained faithful even though it meant terrible suffering. How many of you had people when you came to Christ that turned their back on you? You can say today in this valley in certain places, I'm a Christian. You need to love Jesus like I love him. How many of you know people are going to turn their back on you? It's not a popular stance. But when you're bold enough to stand up for the Lord, how many of you know he's going to stand up for you? He's going to meet you right where you're at. So it says, remember how you remain faithful even though it meant terrible suffering. Sometimes you were exposed to public ridicule and you were And in this instance, it says you were beaten. And sometimes you helped others who were suffering the same things. You suffered along with those who were thrown into jail. And when you, when you, and when all you owned was, excuse me, was taken from you, you accepted it with joy. These are some of the tribulations that the early disciples and people of God had to endure. You knew that there were better things waiting for you that will last forever. So verse 35 is really where I'm going. So do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Remember that word reward. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that He has promised. Everybody say all. All, not just some, not just portions, but everything that he has promised. Another lesson, life lesson that we learned this year, this past year, is that God loves us enough not to leave us the way we are. How many of you know you can't just sit there and go through the motions in your Christian walk? You know that there are certain things that are going to be good for you. Praying is a good thing. Reading the Word, listening to God's Word is a good thing. Fellowship with the saints, that's a good thing. You don't stop doing those things. But you know what? Stretching your faith on a year-to-year basis is what we should be doing in the kingdom of God. Stretching your faith, believing God for more this year. Some of you, God has called you to step out in areas and you've been withholding a little bit and you've, been, and you've just been saying, God, I, I feel secure right where I'm at. And 80% of society is like that. They don't want things to change. But change is the only constant in life. God never changes, but His methods sure change. And God wants to use us for His purposes on planet Earth. So it's time to step in. It's time to hear His voice. It's time to receive what He's given you. It's time to love what He's spoken to you. And it's time to obey and act on the thing that He's called you to do. The next thing is that we learned a lesson here is we need to move with the cloud of His presence. And what I mean by that is in the Old Testament, the children of Israel were moved when the cloud would be there by day and the fire by night, that they were led by this cloud. And and the cloud is meant as a symbol of the Holy Spirit and and the presence of God, the Shekinah glory of God. And the children of Israel would go wherever the cloud was and it would saturate the whole camp. The whole camp. They would, during the day, they, it would protect them from the heat. And at night, God gave fire and it gave warmth at, at night being out in the desert. You know, in the desert, it can get pretty cold at night. And people don't understand that. That you can actually get hypothermia in the desert at nighttime. So they needed both. And they needed to move when the cloud moved. And in our life, we need to come into this place of the rhythm of the glory of God in our life where we're recognizing, oh, he's, he's moving. He's, he's actually, his presence is not here. It's go, this direction is presence driven in a sense and we're moving in his presence. In that time, we need to recognize when the seasons have changed. 
in our own life. Amen? We're not, we're not wanting to plant necessarily in a, in a winter season. We're not, we're not wanting to try to harvest in the summer when we should be working the land, land and, and everything that happens in the summertime. We, how, how many of you know in the harvest is in the fall? That's when you reap. And there are certain things that we need to recognize the season that we're in in our life. You know, I'm 58 years old now, and I know that shocks some of you. Uh, but the, my, the season in my life has changed now. I'm at a different place. And it's not the age thing. It's just a matter of maturity. It's a, it's a matter of... Uh, you know, even, even recognizing that um, there were certain faults that I can't continue in. In this time in my life, I have to walk away from those things, amen, and come into this new season and recognize His, deliver, His delivering power in my life. Amen? So I can come into this the next season that he has for me. And we can prosper in every season of life, no matter what it is. How many of you know that Joseph prospered in no matter what season of life he was in? We need to recognize the leading of the Spirit of God in our life. The sons and daughters of God are the ones who are led by the Spirit of God. We need to stay in fellowship under the cloud. Everybody say, under the cloud. That, that's talking about submission. When he says something, to actually act and obey and do what he's asking us to do. Even though it might seem hard, and even though some of the things that God speaks to us seem like that they're impossible. I'll never forget when we left Montana. And we had nothing. We just had nothing. We had a little bit of savings in the bank. And the Lord said, I want you to sow every bit of that savings that you have. And we were moving. I had, uh, Tyler was two and a half. Vanessa was just born. And the Lord was moving us to Arkansas from Montana. And you know, I'm, I'm one of these guys that I need that security. <laughs> I need to know that God's going to meet me in this next place. And, and, but all I heard was the word, sell everything basically that you have and then sow it into the kingdom and go. And I was like, Lord, we're not even going to be able to pay for the U-Haul. We're not even going to be able to pay our way down there and we're not going to be able to get into anything. And, you know, I had all the excuses. I had all the things that I was thinking in my natural mind. But when we released and gave that savings to the Lord, God opened up the windows of heaven into our life. And he was just saying, Mike, do you trust me with not only you, but with your family, with your two kids? Do you trust me to meet with you? And I said, Lord, I do now. You've met me. You touched my life. You know, and those are things that you can just, I mean, you can bank on it. God's going to be there. When you are obedient to God in his word for your life, how many of you know, blessings follow. He met us every step of the way, even though it wasn't convenient down in Arkansas. It, it, we, weren't, we were living in a one-bedroom apartment off of the pastor's house. And um, how many of you know, you should never want to live by the pastor, in the pastor's house. <laughs> I didn't want him seeing all my lifestyle. I didn't want him seeing Tyler's screaming fits. I didn't want, it, I, I didn't want, but you know what? We did it. And God met with us. We were there for a short period of time. We knew that it was the plan of God for us to go there. We learned the lessons during that time. God brought us out of depression and different things that we had been in up in Montana. He, he brought us through. And how many of you know he took us to the other side? 
So we need to move with the cloud of his presence. We need to stay in fellowship under the cloud. We need to know that, that we don't have to be in fear to go further with new things than what we've done before. And, but also to revisit former things that are solid and have worked. You've got to recognize both. Sometimes we've tried things, but it was the wrong timing. But God is saying, it's time for the blessing of a harvest in your life. It's time for that. So it's important that we're hearing correctly in the time that we live in. Everybody say God's faithfulness. Because this is the key for 2021, is to have the revelation and realization of the faithfulness of God. Everybody say this, God is faithful. He was faithful to produce a son in Sarah's womb at the appointed time. God was faithful to part the Red Sea for Moses and the people of Israel. He was faithful to Joshua in giving the inheritance of the land. God was faithful to David in destroying the giant of the Philistines. He was faithful to Joseph in fulfilling his God-given destiny. God was faithful to Daniel, Jesus' disciples, Paul, Timothy, and he'll be faithful to you because he's no respecter of persons. How many of you love God today? He loves you with an everlasting love and he's ready to pour out from heaven into your life. God knew what would happen in 2020, and He knows what's going to happen already in 2021. And I love that, that God is in control and the enemy is not. God is in control and the enemy is not. We should be the most positive people on the face of the earth, recognizing God's blessings on our life. He is the faithful God that's going to bring us through. His word hasn't changed. His spirit hasn't changed. His promises haven't changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's already made provision for your shortcomings in 2021. How many of you can say hallelujah on that? He's already made a way where there seems to be no way. He's ready to press the reset button of renewal, revitalization, replenishing. The Lord spoke that specifically to me for this congregation. Replenishing. How many of you know there's plenty in heaven? Because He's the God that is more than enough for your life. He's ready to press the reset button of renewal, revitalization, replenishing, and restoration. God's going to restore some things over your life. If you have time today, read 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 30 is where David has just, I mean, gone through the ringer. Everything was stolen from him. His wives were taken. His sons and daughters were taken. All of the spoils of those 600 men that were out in the wilderness, they were all taken. The, the men were wanting to stone him. <laughs> and David sought the Lord. He grabbed a hold of the ephod and, and he went towards the Lord. And the Lord said, David, he said, pursue and you're going to recover all. Some of you have lost stuff in 2020. God's going to give you more than you ever expected. The prophet Jeremiah wrote in Lamentations 3, verse 22 through, through uh, 25, says, The faithful love of the Lord never ends. Israel was in a backslidden state during this time. Jeremiah had hardly, I don't even know if he had any converts. The Bible never says whether he had converts or not. But he preached and preached and preached in the land. And judgment was being poured out in the land. And in the midst of the judgment, Jeremiah comes up with this word. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. 
His mercies begin afresh each morning. How many of you know? That's the reset button. I don't care what your Monday might have been like. Amen? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. God's faithfulness will meet you each morning. Great is thy faithfulness. I say to myself, this is what Jeremiah is saying, I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in Him. That hope is your anchor today, guys. That anchor in the things of God. Don't let it go. The Lord is good to those who depend on Him, to those who search for Him. So how do we walk in this revelation of God's faithfulness? How do we walk in that? Psalm 89 verse 2 says, Your unfailing love will last forever. Your faithfulness is as enduring as the heavens. Psalm 100 verse 5 says, For the Lord is good. We sang about it this morning. The Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. And His faithfulness continues to each generation. How many of you know you're in a generation today? God's faithfulness wants to be established in your life. You've got to see it. That's what Revelation is all about. Once you see it, you can have it. So what do we do? In 2021, focus on His faithfulness. Focus on His faithfulness. Not on the problems that you see on planet Earth. Focus, everybody say that. Focus on His his faithfulness. It brings a clarity that brings distinctness. Some of us really felt like that we were in a fog in 2020. It was like, Okay, okay, God, are you there? Are you there? God, I need to see things the way you see things. And God, sometimes we just breathe through 2020. And that fog just kind of rolled away. And we would begin to see with clarity and distinctness what he was saying. And through that, when we focus on that, he helps us to see clearly the path, and plans that He has for us. Because whatever has your attention and focus sets your direction. So it's important that we're going the right direction. It's important that we're focusing on the right things for 2021. And aim at the right thing. Remember in the movie uh, Patriot, where uh, the father has to say to the son, aim small, miss small. Remember that? And unfortunately, they were shooting people. Um, and, and so he told his son, hey, just don't look at the whole body. Look at the button on the shirt, and you're going to hit. So it's really important. <laughs> Hold on, I have a call. It's really important that you're focusing <laughs> at the right things. <laughs> Not my telephone, not my cell phone. Because you want to hit the thing that you're aiming at, right? You want to hit it, and you want it to be a lethal hit as far as you want to make an impact on planet Earth. So the more that you're focusing on God's faithfulness, and I want you to see this, the more that it's distinct and it's clear what God is saying to you, and you're coming into the plans and purposes of God for your life that you're aiming at something because you know what? 100% of the time, you'll always miss something you're not aiming at. Does that make sense? In other words, aim. Pursue after God's righteousness. Go after the kingdom of God in your life. Don't let anything hold you back from God's highest and His best for your life. Aim at something in 2021. We have to recognize that this thing is not about us. God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness, but there are lives on the line this year. When did you come to Christ? How terrible were you before you came to Christ? 
And yet God loved you and met you. Because somebody was bold enough to stand up and to say, Jesus loves your miserable soul. He loves you. And He's got a plan for your life. I don't know about you, but I want this whole valley to come to Christ. Are you with me? Because that's Jesus' heart is to reach out into every people group and to show Himself strong and it's for the foolish (laughs) to step up and just say what He says. Amen? Say what He says. You're not going to be light. Sometimes you're going to be despised. But is that heart worth it? And God says, yes. Because he doesn't wish any man to perish. God's got a plan. Amen? Let me, let me, I just got a couple minutes. Yeah. Oh, it's early. Oh my gosh, I have so much time. My son's going, no, I'm kidding. Remember that God's faithfulness, the Bible says, stretches to the sky. It's (laughs) all-encompassing. The Bible says in Psalm 36, 5, it says, Your unfailing love, O, is as vast as the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches beyond the clouds. It's big enough to last a lifetime, the faithfulness of God. It encompasses our lifespan and everything in between. It takes into account everything I will encounter, every challenge, every failure, every defeat, and every success and every victory. God's faithfulness to us starts and ends with His life within us. Philippians 1.6 says, And I am certain that God who began the good good work within you, will continue His work until it finally is finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. Faithfulness is this steady, unending attribute of a secure, firm place in His plan, purposes, and promises. The Bible says this, even when we're faithless, even when we're totally lacking in faith, and it seems like nothing nothing is happening, nobody's believing God, the Bible says even when we're faithless, He is faithful faithful to His Word. To fulfill God's Word inside of you. Because God the Father, and He knows He can identify with our frail weaknesses and compensate with His strength because Christ lived on planet Earth. So God the Father understands what humanity has to live through. The faithfulness of God, and I want you to see this, feed your spirit to be and to do spirit-filled things. Psalm 37.3 in the Passion says, Keep trusting in the Lord. And do what is right in his eyes. Fix your heart on the promises of God. And you will be secure, feasting on his faithfulness. Amen. We can feed on God's faithfulness in our life. It feeds our spirit. It it renews. Amen. That's God's word for us today. It renews us on the inside. It revitalizes, it replenishes us on the inside, recognizing that He started something, He's going to take us through. The faithfulness of God is immutable in a world that sees and feels the shifting sand of circumstances. Psalm 55, 19, God Himself will hear me. God enthroned through everlasting ages, the God of unchanging faithfulness. Guys, today I want you to know God is faithful to keep us, faithful to protect us, provide for us, faithful to fulfill everything that He's spoken to us. Let's say that. God is faithful. 
Father, I just thank you for each and every person here today. God, sometimes we feel so insignificant and we feel insufficient for the task that's at hand. But God, we have to recognize that you're in our life, the creator and maker of the heavens and the earth. Lord, you're in us. And because of the blood of Christ, that we can on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, on a minute by minute basis, we can come boldly before your throne of grace. Boldly and ask you things that need to manifest here on planet earth. God, we need help with this, help with that. But Lord, help us to be bold with our faith this year in 2021. Help us, God, to recognize, Lord, that this should be a time of reaping, reaping, reaping in our lives. Those godly seeds that have been sown for years. I prophesy over this congregation, this is a year of fulfillment a year of fulfillment to see some of the promises of God fulfilled in our life. Some of you have left houses, you've left homes, you've left geographical areas, you've come into this area, and I'm telling you, God is going to meet with you. God wants to establish you. God wants to bring you into more truth than you've ever known. God wants to bring you into these new places with Him. It's new positions of authority. It's new places where the blessings of God that like you, you are right there and God is saying if you'll just go after me, if you will seek my heart, you're going to find me. Knock and keep knocking and the doors will be open before you. Father, I thank you for people this year, finding a husband, finding that wife that they've been praying for. Father, I thank you, Lord, for barren wombs today, God, opening up, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for cancer absolutely being obliterated by the healing power of God. I thank you for that, Lord. Father, I thank you this year that, Lord, we're going to see this small little phrase, and it came to pass. We're going to see the fruit of ministry. Lord, we're going to see the harvest time this year in 2021. And God, we're going to refuse to look at what we see in the natural. And God, we're going to see into the supernatural this year. I thank you for the prophetic word of the Lord going forth from this place. God, that you've called us to be a ministry of impact. God, you're going to meet people right where they're at. I thank you, God, for raises and bonuses, God. I thank you for new businesses starting out of this group today. Father, I thank you, Father, for cars that not only run, but they look good. For things that we never even dreamed. God, you want to do super abundantly more than we could ever ask or think. Father, I thank you, God, for meeting people even in, in areas, God, where there's, there has needed to be restitution that's paid, God. I thank you for paying those things off. Father, I thank you, God, this year Lord, for people who have been had cycles of depression and oppression in their lives, in their minds, God. Lord, that that is falling off this year in 2021. That is being severed by your hand this year. And Father, I pray the peace of God into their lives in the name of Jesus, that that peace that passes all understanding, to mount guard over their hearts and over their minds, a consistency in the things of you, God. Lord, a godliness rising up on the inside 
the word of the Lord being spoken out of their mouth. And God, it affects the very atmosphere where people live. I thank you for that this year. And I thank you, Lord, God, for those who have been asking, God, what can I do? For giving those people and let there be gatherings in their hearts, God. Lord, where they, the, our older ones can mentor younger ones. And I'm not speaking age, I'm just maturity. I thank you, Lord, for the impartation of the Holy Spirit this year in people's lives, establishing the call of God on their life. I thank you for that. Father, I pray for new open doors of opportunity to take place this year in 2021. God, cause us to be launched out in a new realm, in a new place this year, God. Thank you for all those open doors all throughout our valley. Into every people group, every kindred, every tribe, God. Thank you, Lord, for touching the state of Idaho. Thank you for touching the Northwest. God, thank you for touching nations for you this year. And Lord, we just want to give you all the praise and honor and power and glory is yours, God, for everything that you're doing in our lives. Lord, we love you. Amen. Amen. If any of you want extra prayer up here, uh, our elders will be up here up front and some of our leaders will be up here. We would love to pray for you going into this new, uh, this new year. Uh, how many of you can honestly say this morning, you know that God is faithful. He's going to bring things to pass in your life. Some of you, you've never even expected. You've never even expected it. It's going to open up. Amen. Let's all stand. Thank you for coming today, guys, and, and being a part. And um, pray that church completely opens up this year in 2021 so we can get everybody back uh, in here so we can fellowship and be together. And uh, I, I'm believing great things uh, this year. Marissa? place. Jewel, new place. New place. Old things passed away. Behold, all things are new. God's going to open it up for you. God's going to bridge a gap into this community there, where there has never been before. It's going to take boldness on both of you. God's going to do it at his right time. You're going to see, see things start to take place. Joel, you got water baptized this year, man. It's time to go, right? <laughs> it's time to go. I just want to encourage you. Let the excuses, let everything go and step into this new place that he has for you. It's abundant place. It's a large place. It's a place where both of you are going to be fulfilled. And I see God just bringing you guys together. Team. A team. To affect our valley. And beyond. Amen? Okay, God will let you go. Love you. Love you guys.